Do you want to know what a makeup artist would do to change your makeup routine? That's what my client wanted. She's in her late 50s. She already knows how to do her makeup. But I changed a few things and made a world of difference. My eyebrows are what, like, amaze me. We did make some big changes on the brow. Woohoo! I'll go into detail on the brows so you can do the same thing at home. I'm going to show you the classic shape that I'm going for. Most of the people that I see in my chair, the lower part of their brow is curved when it should be straight. You see that lower line? That should be straight, and there's hair that's curved instead. It's not that huge of a difference between the before and after, but I'm trying to lower the brow just a little bit. You'll see in the way I work, I'm just making the tiniest little marks, barely a whisper. You're also going to have the other side of the, the air pop pencil has a brush. You're going to need to brush them a lot too. Soft. Oh yeah, that does look good. Difference? Yeah, it does look good. But it's a lot. Look at the difference between the two brows. You know the yeah. Other there's ones... less bone. Look, like there's a lot of bone exposed here. Yes. <laughs> this looks a little more natural. I think so. If there's a curve at the beginning of the brow, it should be straight for a classic shape. So you see, I want you to fill in that lower area, that little crescent area. And you can do it lightly, like I'm making a lot of tiny little moves with the pencil, and I'm not doing anything where I'm pressing down too hard. You want it to be just a whisper, but you do want your brow to take up a little bit more space. So you don't look as bony, like my client said, which was so perceptive. It's part of the reason why as we age, it looks better when we gain weight than when we lose it. I also fill in the back part behind the arch. So I make the end of the brow look a little bit thicker too. And then brushing, brushing, brushing. You can even take a little bit of hairspray and spray it on that part of the brush so that the hairs stay in place. You can see that it takes a little time too. I'm not rushing through it and I'm using really small um, brush strokes and I'm building it as I go. You don't wanna just go in there with one heavy line and be like, oh, I'm done. You wanna do a really light touch because you don't wanna have too hard or too dark of a brow. You just wanna feather in some small brush strokes with the pencil and you eventually get a soft finish like this after picture. And your eye does look less bony. Now this next one is a huge one. I'm sure you all have an eyelash curler sitting in your bathroom drawer somewhere. So many of my clients are like, oh yeah, I have one of those, I just don't use it. Not only do I use it this one time before I put mascara on, you'll see I go back in and do it again after the mascara's on. That's how important curling your lashes is. It's something that all pro makeup artists do that a lot of women at home do not do. Look at the difference. Her eye looks so awake and all it is is curling the lash and putting on a little bit of mascara. You'll see how I put the mascara on. I really kind of wiggle the brush back and forth. I'm trying to get to the roots of the lashes so that the whole eye looks healthier and more vibrant and it's framed by those dark lashes. Here's another fun one that a lot of pro makeup artists do. Put a Kleenex underneath your lower lashes as you're putting on your mascara at the bottom. It helps you from putting too much on and it prevents any smudges. I want you to line the lower quarter, the outer corner of your lower eye. At the corner, I'm almost backing it up into where your top liner is going to go. The taupe needs to go all the way back here. Okay. You know, you got to kind of, it's almost like bringing it up and back. So you want to keep going up and back with the liner. Not a cat eye. Maybe you want to do that. But even if just for your regular liner, go a little bit up and back in that outer corner of the eye. For the concealer, use a brush 
and use just the tiniest dot of concealer. Don't just smooth it all over and make a big mess. Target it to where you need it in the darkest spot, which may be on the inner corner, um, almost on the inside of your nose, if that makes sense, where your eye corner and the nose meet. After you put the concealer on with the brush, blend it in with the heat of your fingers. I also like to put makeup on like an hour or two before I leave the house so that your skin oils have a chance to work with it and make it look more natural. So this is my darkest contour. I'm capping it off. And then the placement is right here. Jawline. Pop the jaw. But softly, right? And it's a little bit above you know, that shadowy line that is your jaw. Then the other place I do is bottom of the nose to the top of the ear. So there's kind of a line right there and I'm just gonna do a little bit. Just like the softest support for what is already good about your cheeks. And you can feel like I'm barely pressing down. It's not like, woo, let's make, cause it does, it, it makes itself known. And then, you know, you can pop a lot up here. This is something pro makeup artists do in the makeup trailer every day. We darken the roots of the hairline. You're giving the hairline a more rounded shape and more symmetrical, almost like what you did with the brows. You're giving a roundness to that hairline and a symmetry to that hairline. I always use a wet blush first. So I want something to look like it's a flush that's coming from from you, not something that was powdered on top of your skin. So use a cream or liquid blush. You're going to do a powder on top, and I'll show you another trick. Then I'm going to take my, my brush, my small blush brush, and kind of hold it in shape like this and put just a little bit above where your eyeshadow is. Okay. So you kind of match everywhere. That glow kind of matches all over. And now you don't have lipstick on yet, so the blush is probably gonna to look too dark. But when you put lipstick on, you may say, uh, I need more blush. So we're gonna to have to kind of adjust. Sure. Yeah, I think I'm putting a little bit more of the, the foundation on the Beauty Blender, just to make everything make sense. Blend, blend, blend. Then go in with a second coat of mascara. I know most of you don't take the time to do it every day, but it gives the eyes so much more impact. And if you sit in my chair in the makeup trailer, I'm definitely doing two coats of mascara. I also go back in with a detail lash curler. So this is a half lash curler, and I recurl the outer lashes to make sure that they are up and they're curved. But the placement is right above where we did the blush. So right here, you can kind of see okay. where I'm putting it. And then I'm gonna blend it with my finger and let it kind of melt in, but I want you to see exactly where it goes. Okay. I leave a high point where I don't touch and I just kind of touch around, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like leave some of it not as blended so it really shows. Okay. This is a big one. I'm gonna overline the top lips one layer bigger than what is actually there. The color that I'm using is Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude. The links are below this video. Um, this one lets me get away with a lot. It's going to feel weird, but you'll see how natural it looks. Does that feel weird? A little, but it doesn't look weird. Yeah, because it matches the other side. That's the thing. I don't overline on the bottom lip. I just follow the natural lip line. But you see the difference that it makes. And no one would be the wiser. Okay, and then close your eyes. One, two, three. So that should keep, well, the reason I really do it is because it keeps the eye makeup where it is. Right. It doesn't smudge as much when I use this, so I'm happy. Probably gonna make a video today <laughs> since I look good. Oh, you better. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed these tips. Leave me a comment below and let me know what else you'd like to see.